I have just arrived at the location where I'm going to be imaging tonight. I found this really cool place and it's actually in the middle of this abandoned old fortress and some of the walls are still up surrounding me and I parked the van right in the middle. It's also overlooking a really cool lake in the distance I can just see over there and this has got to be one of the prettiest spots I've been in on the trip so far and as you can see the sky is looking super blue so tonight it's hopefully going to be a really good night for astrophotography. Tonight I am working on the California Nebula. Now this nebula is massive in the sky and not even my camera and telescope is wide enough to see all of the nebula itself. So I'm just going to be focusing in, in the middle portion and trying to get as much detail as possible. The California Nebula lies in the constellation of Perseus and it's a great target for shooting in the autumn to winter months. It rises really high in the location where I am at now and I'm around about 40 degrees north. And I think it's quite obvious why the California Nebula gets its name. Pretty much identical shape of the state of California in the United States of America. Now for the technical aspects of the photograph itself. The California Nebula is red and it's very red and that is due to the glowing hydrogen that sits in the nebula itself radiating this deep red. So I think the best way to capture this nebula is to gather as much hydrogen data as I can possibly get. And then to make it a colour photo on a separate night, gather the RGB channels to create the colour photo while then adding the hydrogen data just to boost the image itself to make it really pop. It's at this point during the day where I have the most fun. I know I'm in for a good night of astrophotography. I'm setting up in the sun and just really appreciating the location that I'm in. And I just don't think it gets much better than this. This session I'm going to be using the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Now this mount is a beast and I really like using it during my astro sessions. And when I say it's a beast, it really is. It is very heavy and it can take payloads much more than what I'm using with my little refractor telescope. If anyone's thinking of getting the EQ6R Pro for their new astronomy rig, I would really recommend it. And as you can tell, most people are using one of these nowadays, amateurs anyway. And when you know most people are using them you probably have a good idea that it's going to be a good mount for you. I am currently all set up, ready for a night of imaging. The sky is finally super clear after the last few days have just been really off and cloudy and foggy. And it feels so good to get back under a dark, clear sky. Now, the last few nights have been properly cold. It got down to zero degrees last night, but hopefully tonight isn't going to be as cold as it's looking to get around five degrees. And even that's pretty chilly when you haven't got any heaters or any sort of heating equipment in the van. I've only got blankets and sleeping bags to keep me warm. The one benefit of it being cold is that the telescope actually uses less power. And that's ideal when you're in these remote locations where you don't have access to the main power and I'm running off a portable power source. It's 
At this point, astrophotography is difficult. It is 2 a.m. in the morning. I've just woken up from a little nap that I had time to do a meridian flip and then carry on imaging for the rest of the night. It's at this point where I think astrophotography really has to separate from the men and the boys who are willing to get up in the middle of the night to carry on an imaging. It can be really, really painful because you just want to sleep, but you know it's worth it. So you know it's the best thing to do.